The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Please note, the new number is... This podcast, I'm releasing this episode, literally my guest just stepped out of my house and uh, uh, we, we talked about the Calexico Fire uh, Department, that they have issued six uh, firefighters or notice of termination. They're uh, threatening to shut down a fire station. So a city of 40,000 people are facing, is facing um, to have only one fire station in operation. A city along the border where thousands of people, you know, uh, go through there every day uh, is going to be fine with one fire department. I guess that's what the city manager, city administration is saying. That sounds that is crazy. That doesn't just sound crazy. That is crazy. And so I had um, Norma Aguilar, Lala Rivera, and Letty Zuno come over and share with me. Um, the reality is that they're facing. And so uh, there's issues all over the valley. And it's crazy. This valley is, is primed to not wake up, but it's primed for r- real change, I think. I think we're getting fed up. We're getting tired um, of administration, city, admin, local administrations uh, not listening. Are simply being in their own bubble, and I think it's time that we um, wake up—not wake up, but speak up—and let our voices be heard. And, and I think we're t- we're taking the right step. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on. And th- 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 one of the topics they didn't touch about is uh, how shutting a fire station will affect housing, house insurance, house insurance, home insurance, business insurance. When um, they're going to be limited on an, a, a resource that deals with safety security and literally life and death the city the administration of calexico is willing to um play with fire no pun intended and in having this fire station shut down brawley has two fire stations we're not as busy as calexico in no capacity and yet we have to there was a need for two fire stations that we got one recently built. So I don't know. I don't know what this city manager, city council uh, is allowing to happen. I know they need to cut. They need to save money. I know that's. But at what expense? At what cost? I think the easy. I think they're doing the easy thing and say, okay, this uses a lot of money. We're going to cut it rather than go through the whole budget and see where you're spending and where it's not officially spent. Um. And I don't doesn't appear as if the city is willing to do that, do the hard work. Now, don't get me wrong, make closing a fire station is a hard choice, but that doesn't mean it didn't require you know hard work. So I think I hope the council puts pressure on their city manager because he works for them and the people. They hired him; they're essentially his boss. Speak up and and put the pressure on him. The people put the pressure on the council. The council puts the pressure on the city manager to to do work. To look at how they can save money, since that's what this decision he is basing it on, um, without putting people's livelihoods at risk. And that's what I had my guests come on here and share. I think they made a great point. There's a town hall meeting on February, city council meeting on Wednesday. What someone needs to do is go chalk up that city hall. Say, save our fire department. Send the message. If you feel like some of these city council members are hiding, or maybe... uh, don't uh, aren't letting you know where they stand on this then send the message to them and that's all i gotta say so thank you guys for tuning in uh great interview great roundtable discussion with uh, with the three individuals from calexico i appreciate them coming on i hope you learn and get uh more insight on on what's going on on our uh, southern sister city and our southern city of the valley and Thank you guys for tuning in. My name is Gil, Small Town News Podcast. Enjoy. I'm sorry. And your name? I'm sorry. Here I am. Uh, no, that's cool. Uh, Lalo Rivera. Lalo Rivera. Norma uh, Aguilar. Of course. And, and Letty Zuno. All right. Uh, welcome to Small Town News Podcast. We'll be discussing. Here I'm trying to get out of politics, Norma, and you bring me right back in. Just bring me right back. <laughs> the funniest thing you got, Yeah, right. <laughs> right? Yeah, you got to tell me twice. Um, so... Calexico West Fire Station 
they issued notices of termination for six employees. So I guess just explaining what's going on. Someone from not from Calexico is wondering. Well, I see another headline from Calexico. You know what is going on? Another headline, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, what what is going on is 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 currently um, we're trying to finish off the year and and we were trying to do. Uh, all the collective bargaining units were getting together so that we can help you know negotiate with the city. Um, some have already signed. Um, it's, I know we haven't, and I really can't speak for any of the other bargaining units whether or not they've signed, or, or, or in fact, if everybody has signed yet. Um, I've heard that we were the last ones. I also hear that we're not the last ones. So um, I'm only going to speak obviously on our on our behalf. Uh, but we uh, attempted to talk to the city in uh, late June to late January. Um, and basically, without you know, as if we wait for the discussion, you know, as it unfolds, you know, but um, I can go into more detail. But we basically haven't been able to gather enough information uh, so that we can make a decision. There's a narrative that's currently going out saying that we're fighting with the city or that we are are digging our heels in, which is so completely further from the truth. Um, what we've been trying to do is we've been trying to get all the financials so that we can make an educated decision as to how we want to complete our negotiating process with the city of Calexico. Um, so we have been now fast forward and we're thrusted to a point where we actually received a letter of intent. The letter of intent stated that they were going to implement a 30% cut. Um, that cut was going to come in various forms. It could have been cut in, in as far as personnel or, or even services. Um, so after that letter of intent, we then it was then followed up with actual termination letters. Uh, so as of right now, what the city is looking at is the termination of six firefighters, uh, five of those of which are firefighter paramedics and one of them that's a firefighter EMT. Uh, the difference in that is that as, as a firefighter paramedic, you have what's considered an advanced life support capabilities. A firefighter EMT has basic life support capabilities. Both of them can do an excellent job. Both of them do an excellent job. Um, but we will be losing six of those gentlemen on March 19th. Um, that obviously domino affects a whole bunch of other things, um, which the discussion is going to going to bring out. Uh, but that was actually that letter was the result of one meeting um, with the city manager. We had a negotiating sit down with our negotiating team. Um, what we thought was possibly going to be the first of maybe a couple of meetings to see if that we could you know have any some sort of concessions. Um, that wasn't the case. Um, so what happened was we then received those letters that actually gave very specific dates and it actually named the firefighters that were going to be cut and we're here today. So um, fast forward to where I get a phone call and, and telling me Norma that, you know um, I've got some citizens that are concerned phone call, got a phone call, um, one was a citizen, another one was a parent of one of the paramedics, she says, I don't know how it works, she says, but could you please talk to them, and so um, I went and I asked my questions, and then I came away with, what are you trying to do with with services with the city, because um, to, to me, I lived in that area, that, that area is a historically underserved area, um, and um, there is a uh, huge need, not just with the residents that live on that area, but you've also got three schools in that area. You've got Willie Moreno Junior High, you got Blanche Charles, and you've got the adult education, which is and, and also the uh, continuation because they relocated the students over there. Um, in addition, you also have um, the uh, yeah main school, main school, and you have Vincent Memorial and Vincent Memorial. So. So you're not just talking about hitting services, response services to um, residents. You're talking about schools, too, and businesses that are in that area. And so six from, like I said, why just that? They didn't, did they terminate any from the other fire station, or is it just... Well, the way that it works is that we have only two stations. There are only two stations that serve a population of 40,000 plus. Um that doesn't include the transient population that comes across to and from the United States Mexico border it can vary from anywhere from twenty five to fifty thousand. Um, but the reason that they were picked is because those come from the very as far as higher dates um, from the bottom up. So we have our most junior uh, 
personnel which were, were selected. And, and, and I even hesitate to say junior because they have already uh, served, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe we're at a minimum of, of six years. So six to eight years, six to nine years, that, that's what that, that, that group entails. So these are not rookies. These are seasoned firefighters. These are guys that are on the ambulance every single shift that they're on and providing you know, care in various forms, whether it be medical or whether it be you know, in fire suppression activities. So that's, it was geared towards the lower six, the bottom six. I take a break. People are saying they're having a hard time to speak this up. Okay. So I can hear you better. So you guys will help. You guys will be a little closer, but uh, I think it'll uh, be fine. So, I guess I'm still trying to wrap. What's the city's justification? Just purely budgetary? Just say, hey, we need to make cuts, and you guys are. Yes. Gotta go. They, they, they gave an initial dollar amount, which I believe was revised, um, but the current dollar amount, which is a gap that they need to fill, they need to fill this gap, and that has a number. That number is $568,000. So without that, they can't meet their budget. So um, there's no more pennies to pinch. There's no more places to pull, no drawers to open to see if there's any loose change. That's it. 30%. Cut. If you those guys don't want to give it up in, in, in salaries and benefits, um, we're going to do it in other forms. And in the forms that they, which they were saying is going to be in personnel and services. So although that even affects us personally as, as, as firefighters, um, you have to kind of overshadow that, you know, and, and it's a huge shadow. You have to overshadow that with how it affects the citizens of the city of Calexico because you're going to take away an entire fire station. And... I don't really believe that the, 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 the desks over at City Hall understand what that entails because you cannot remove the whole west side. You're excluding the entire west side from a service that they've had for years, decades. You know, so the only way that you can actually try, if you take that away, now you have the, the only station left, which is over there right south of City Hall, and they're going to run an engine and an ambulance for the entire population of Calexico. Crazy. It's <laughs> crazy. So, and then <laughs> even if you look at it, currently our, our, what we have, what we'd like to have is, is, is it, when, we were at full, when we were at full staff, we had 10 uh, firefighters per shift. We, we haven't been able to meet that because people have left, people have sought employment somewhere else, or people were never really replaced. We have then dropped down there to eight, eight per shift. Okay, now if these if you take that we have that should be twenty four. Now if you take doing your your simple math, you minus six. Now you've dropped that down, and we're at what eighteen. You know, so that's that's your, your what you've done is you've increased the workload to the for the firefighters there. And and don't get me wrong, we're not afraid to do work. I mean that's what we do. You know, we come in and we have to deal with harsh situations. But what happens is that you decrease that service. You've now put the workload. You've incremented it. You've increased it probably close to maybe 100%. Um, so by doing that, it just it just creates a whole domino effect of a whole bunch of other things, you know, and, and those are the things that, you know, we'll be discussing here today is hopefully we'll bring that to light. And can I ask something of, of sure. you? You're talking uh, about numbers and just as a citizen of Calexico, I'd, I would wonder, um, correct me if I'm wrong, so if you're, you're down six six guys right in, in your workforce it increases the workforce of, of the folks that remain what is would it not mean that you guys then have longer shifts more overtime therefore this savings that would appear to happen they're not in fact happening because you guys you have more people you have less people to work with yes so then you have to contribute for okay smaller workforce people still get sick people still have time off people still um, might want to pursue other avenues, so so you have people covering ships for for that stuff. Plus, just I don't know, there's, there's overtime involved. I would imagine yes. more overtime um, involved when you have less of a workforce. Am I wrong? I so, so, so burnout as well. And and burnout. <laughs> no, no, abs so absolutely. Yeah. Um, I I so I'm I'm guessing that maybe this this um let's just say it is five hundred 
thousand dollar savings, it's not really going to occur because it, so you you've reduced you reduce a workforce. So now you have less people to do the same amount of work over the same amount of time. So we're going to run through your guys' even energy level pretty quickly. Yeah, no, no, you're, um, you're, you're I'll tell completely you though, as a, as a citizen of, of Calexico, what it resonates like, what it what it feels like is that the city is willing um, to put a price tag on our life. And, I, and I'll tell you, it might, it might sound very extreme, it might sound dramatic, but I'll tell you that is absolutely what it feels like as a resident of Calexico, whether I'm on the east side, the west side, the good side, the bad side, that the city has put a price tag on our life, on our well-being, on our safety of $500,000. And that some of us, some of us that may, that may die because we don't have access to emergency safety services, that's okay. That's that some folks sitting behind the desk are saying that's okay. I I don't remember in the course of what you've sort of um, panned out for us, Lalo, of this maybe year or so that these discussions have been going on. Um, ever as a resident of the city of Calexico receiving some sort of notice inviting me to a meeting of sorts to say, as residents of Calexico, here's what we're proposing. How would this impact you? I, I would hope for, a, at minimum, uh, uh, so sort of an impact study. You know, what, what does this look like? What are the constraints of our city? What are the needs of our city? What are the resources that we currently have and if maybe through some study they would have said, well, we have an abundance of resources. We don't need an entire fire station. It, it, we've we've just we've had it as a luxury. <laughs> then it's like, oh, well, that would be nice. Well, thing. okay, <laughs> it's, it's just it's been luxurious. Let's let's remove it. That's not the case. No, it's I mean, not. I mean, I, I, so again, as a resident of the city of Calexico, as a person who's vested and 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 we all pay into our own public safety, no one ever invited me informed me any of us we all live there to say this is how you're gonna be impacted as a parent of two children that still go to one of the 12 schools we have 12, 12 schools in the in just the city of Calexico alone mm -hmm. I can't I can, I, I can tell you absolutely as a parent of them how many times they have you guys have come out as a, as a fire department with the ambulance to save the lives of my children. I, I can absolutely tell you as a parent that that has happened. And I can tell you 100% that I, 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 would, I wouldn't think for a minute to think, well, I hope nothing happens to my kids while they're at school and there's this lack of resources. And so I just hope that they're safe and I hope that, you know, the, nothing bad ever happens to them or any other of, of these close to 10,000 maybe students that we have. Um, during the school year in schools and that you guys come out or you're a vital fire department is a vital part of any community any community that you go to when you think about what it takes to get a a, a community going a city running right you have your your housing elements you have the you the basic things that people need you want access to grocery stores you want access to a hospital you want access to schools you want access to recreational activities you want parks, you want church, you want to be able to um, go practice your religion somewhere, um, you want you want better roads because you want to be able to get across town. You, you don't ever want to have a, one side of town that's unable because of access or because of resources not to go to another part of, mm -hmm. of town, not to enjoy or services are more robust in one part of town versus another part of town. You want to be able to break those barriers remove those barriers yes and i think what's happening now you will inevitably have cut out the west part of town not just from emergency services but from all of the more abundance of services that are on the east side of town so i so i talked to you about just the 12 schools that are in the city of calexico we have a population of at a minimum 40 thousand residents in in 1990 when there were when the, during the, in the census of that year there were 
about 18,000 residents. And at that point, we still had two fire stations. When we had 18,000 residents, there was still a need for two fire stations. We double the, the, the amount of people in Calexico. If you, if you do basic math, you would think, well, then shouldn't we double the amount of our public safety? Mm -hmm. we, we, we didn't. So from 1990 to 2017, we have 40,000 people now living in the city with still only two fire stations, and we've lost personnel in our, in our, in our fire. Prior, prior to this, this issue of, of notice, notice of layoffs, that you already, we were already down six, six yes. or five? Yes. Yeah, because uh, people left and, and the, the positions weren't backfilled. Right, and, and so, so it's already, it's, it's been gutted. <clears throat> the, the, the services have been gutted to, to the core. I, I mean, as it is, we don't have enough people responding to the needs. If you look at, uh, we have two ports of entries, just in the city of so two ports of entries, 40,000 residents, between 25 to 50,000 people that cross the border, right? Every, yes. every day. They come in through Calexico first. 40% of the calls for emergency services go out to, uh, I believe the address is 201st Street. The 200, border. downtown port of entry. The board. 40% of the calls for the city of Calexico, so 40% of access to services that I would, as a resident, would want have to have accessible to, to my town goes to 1st Street, to border crossers, people that I, I'm going to put it out there may or may not be uh, residents of Calexico, but absolutely because we're, it's, it's a humane service as well, go out there and, and, and rescue lives all the time. But 40% of the calls are out there, leaving only one station available to 12 schools, 10,000 students that could at any point potentially need services, 40,000 residents that also need the service. So I, I, I'm shocked. I'm, I'm, I'm saddened, but I'm very upset that the city I live in and the folks that are charged with governing in a humane, compassionate, and intelligent manner. That I, I'm a voter of the city of Calexico. And these folks that are up there making decisions on my behalf on how my well-being, our well-being, the well-being mm -hmm. of the citizens of Calexico is going to pan out have decided that our our lives are it's okay to put our lives at stake for five hundred thousand dollars for any amount of money they, or, per, or perhaps they didn't think that uh, uh, the historically less affluent side of Calexico was going to say anything was going to was not going to speak up or that nobody was going to speak up on their behalf well I think they're finding out differently you know, when you when you look at what also just currently what's going on with the infrastructure of Calexico, so you you have this um, they're they're moving the the one of the ports of entries, right? They're they're moving it a little more towards this the current construction the west. is directly affecting a lot of the activities within so, the city. So the city right now sort of cut in, into two across Highway 111. I live on the west side. I work on the east side. So just for me to get from work to home, it's, it's about a two mile drive, takes me now between 30 to 40 minutes because I, of the traffic congestion. That's just me stopping nowhere, trying to go home. I can't imagine emergency services trying to get through that if someone is in the middle of a heart attack, if someone um, has, a, if there's, a, if there's a, an accident, if there's a collision. Add to this that it, whether it, it pans out or not, that the, the recent notice that the new um, administration of the United States has decided that Calexico, that they may put out to bid as early as next month the construction of the new border wall. Um, and some news outlets have reported that Calexico might be one of the first um, areas that, that this construction begins. Imagine that the added influx of traffic of people of border crosses of congestion and now we're going to we're, we're going to remove a vital part of what's going to make that ease that congestion and ease the added um public risks that come with just more more traffic in an already um significantly impacted city that calexico is i mean our, our roads are 
probably not set up anymore to handle 40,000 people. It shouldn't take me 40 minutes to get across town in, in, in a city the size of Calexico. But it does because of traffic. And the way Calexico people drive. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, uh, all of these, uh, you aggregate all of these things and, and then you, and, and you absolutely take into consideration that the west side of town has a, m less, less resources, less access to the services that are on the, on the west side of town. And you remove just what's p made that side of town more, more viable. You remove a fire station as the, the feeling that people get knowing that if you live close to a police station and it's just made more psychological, right? You live close to a police station, you feel safer. You feel, you live close to your fire station. You feel safer. You know that it's, it's there. It's right. I, I live two blocks from the um, station one and I, and I hear it all the time, but you, you get a sense of safety. Um, you, you feel like, okay, this is, that's my community working for me. That's people that are out at two, three, four, five, six in the morning, just saving lives. And, and station two is placed where it was at, you know, for, for strategic reasons, because what you have here is, is and, and maybe just a little education as, as to how the operation, a daily operation will work. So you have station two on the west side, you have station one on the east side. Out of station one, you have a, one fire engine and an ambulance. You know, we're, an, we're a fire department that provides uh, medical transport. Um, no other city has that. Everybody else contracts out. Um, but we provide that to our city. For one, for one huge ginormous reason is we do not have a hospital within our city, within our city boundaries, within our population, we don't. So we have to provide some sort of service, some sort of way to have our citizens have a, if, if, if in a dire need, they need some medical services. Um, we do that in the form of the ambulance. So out of station one, you have an engine and you have an ambulance. Out of station two, you have an engine. A lot of times what happens at station two is that when they get a call, some people that may not know how it works out, is that they'll call 911. The engine will actually go out to the house. One of the first was a very common question. It's like, well, I didn't call you guys. I called the ambulance. Well, we understand that. But what the thing that happens is, is because they have to come from across town, um, that engine is staffed with the same exact thing that the ambulance has. And it has all the capabilities that the ambulance had aside from transporting that patient to a hospital. You have a paramedic. You had all the advanced life support equipment that you need to maintain a patient that needs required, that, that needs advanced life support care. So what the engine does is it gets to the scene first, begins its assessment and treatment if it's needed. So they have automatically care right away. And meanwhile, the ambulance is driving across to get there. You know, once they get there, we do a quick turnover or we do a turnover. Patient is placed on the gurney and then is transported to the hospital. And and I mean, I, just so that it's, it's, it's kind of it's, so it's known, you know, that right there, that's that's where it, that's where it begins. Well, it doesn't finish there because then if that patient gets transported through the ambulance within the city of Calexico, they take it to El Centro. Well, that turnaround time right there is going to be, you know, let's call it about an hour. Okay, but what happens there? And this is something that happens every single day. You know, we have, say, eight people on shift. The ambulance carries the two people. As soon as that ambulance leaves, we've now dropped down two firefighters. So say in the event that we do have some sort of fire activity that requires fire suppression activities, we're down two firefighters. Now, they have their radios. They do hear what's the traffic's going on. What they're going to do is they're going to expedite their transport to some, you know, to very safely. They'll get to the hospital, do a, a turnover, drop their patient off. They'll probably put their gear on at the hospital, turn around, and drive on back. And what they'll do is they'll go to the fire ground, and then they'll be given their assignments. So that's what would happen. So, you know, so we constantly are losing firefighters on a daily basis just because of our normal operations. But that's a known thing. But a lot of the citizens don't maybe really understand that or not aware of it because, you know, why would you? You know, you, you're, you're going to go about your daily activities. You know that you have a fire department there. So a lot of people, when they say, well, nothing really happens there. Well, you know, it's Let's leave it that way, right? So if you feel that way, fantastic. S people are doing their job, whether it's on the law enforcement side or whether it's on the fire side. You know, but you take that one fire station away on the west side of the town, they might not feel that safety anymore for whatever reason, whether they don't have a service that's immediately provided to them, a delay in service, 
Um, it, it, this effect also too is, is very much we need to say that it's not going to be a gradual it's not going to be an adjustment period once these gentlemen leave it starts service is done so whatever you were used to in the past it's gone so, and then you have people that are making a decision um, and, and I understand finances that you know they have to be met I, we get it but you know you chose to cut something that is so vital to the citizens of Calexico and and and, it, and it's going to be an immediate impact immediate no adjustment period we're, and we're not even going to get into right now how that affects the rest of the valley because say for example if we get tied up now say all it takes if we lose those guys and we have an engine and an ambulance that's only two units all it takes is two calls to tie those up get a third call just get a third call what's going to happen who's going to respond we're going to have to draw from other people. So we have, you know, a mutual aid agreement that's that's established within the Imperial Valley. And then what that does is that we do draw in from other departments or, you know, other or private ambulance company. You know, but <clears throat> you're going to start drawing time, in. Right? You're going to, the this, response this time response with that alone. Time is the key. And now you're taking away services time. from other cities. Absolutely. You're taking away services from other cities. They were used to having their fires, their fire engine over in Heber right there you know for through imperial county well that engine is going to have to come to the city of calexico and what happens after that is an imperial county fire department then shuffles their guys to to be able to strategically uh take care of that that area so this decision that was made behind a desk in city hall not just affects one person one family one neighborhood one side of the city you just in fact affected the entire imperial valley and that's something that's really not being addressed. And that's mm -hmm. also something that should be taken into account. Yeah. And what Letty's explain is totally correct. She's, she's hitting it perfectly. And, you know, it's coming from a citizen. And this is how, and we've talked to multiple citizens. And it affect, we're hearing the same, same wording. We're hearing the same statements. You know, what? They, they don't realize it. Why did, how come nobody told me? You know, I mean, that's almost the way that we took it when we got the letter of intent for our six guys. So it's kind of difficult. It's hard. We're trying to use some restraint here, you know, but it, it affects us not. And I do really want to emphasize it. Yes, it does affect us as a fire department, as firefighters, as a brother firefighters. But it affects the city, the city that we raised our hand, we swore to protect. So same, we're so the same way that 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 council. <clears throat> In that, in that council chambers, there's language there that says you're so, that they're sworn to watch out for the welfare and safety of their citizens. That's How their number this? one mission. That's number one. Yeah. When it comes to their mission statement, that's the very first item that they are supposed to take care of. I guess so it goes to the council. I guess what, where is the accountability in this? Who is it? The city manager? Does it fall on the city manager, city council? I mean, where does this decision to do this All of stem them. from? All of them. The city manager is is op, op, operating on the direction of the city council. So, uh, his he publicly stated that he was given a directive by the majority of the city council to find a way to reduce that gap, and that's and, that, and according to him, it, it may be an unpopular decision, but this is what I was told to do. I, I'll tell you what it is. It's, it's a life or death decision that, that they have that they have taken. It's on the, on the backs of the lives of the citizens of Calexico. That's the, the that, that's the decision. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. of the, the entire yeah. valley. If we're, if we're taking resources away from the rest of the valley to um, to help to help out our own residents, our family members, our um, et, et cetera, we absolutely affect the entire valley. I I have to I, I want to add something besides being a resident of. The valley. I also run an Imperial Valley's Independent Living Center, and we, we happen to be um, located in the city of Calexico. So one one of the things that happens quite a bit, not just not just with Calexico, but we we get calls when there's um, an is an issue with um, access somewhere, uh, and I and I and I have to share this example with everyone because I, and Lalo, you said something. You said you know if if people don't um, aren't complaining about the service, that means everyone's that means you're doing your job. And and this, we're getting what Which exactly for, what yeah. what we pay for. We 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 hear the fires, the sirens going here and there, and we we have a we have an absolute sense of of safety and security in our city, which we're not going to have if if they close the station. 
I'll tell you, not to share this story with you. Twice in the last um, three years, as an agency, I received a call from citizens of the um, De Anza, it, it's, it used to be the De Anza Hotel, now it's the, the De Anza, it's residential, right? So it's um, a lot of senior citizens mm -hmm. um, live there. And um, we've gotten a call as an agency because they're the elevator, they're, I think the only way you, you, can, you can get up to the residence there is, is through an elevator and the elevator has broken down. There's and, there's stairwell access, but what you have, and, and I don't mean to interrupt, is is you have um, people that physically can't go down, exactly. so they have the elevator. Th yes, th so thank you for correcting me. So we, the, and you're right, the calls that we've gotten in terms of the complaints are from the folks that um, need the elevator for for access issues. They're on wheelchairs. They have mobility aids, canes, walkers, or they have. Um, my do see my dad's hearing me. <laughs> me too. I'll tell you. I'll share, I'll share something about my dad right now, but. Um, what what these residents have have done as as far as complaints that we've got in our offices twice in the last at least three years, um, they call nine one one. These folks that otherwise would be confined to their residence up in in Deanza, and they call the fire department and they say, I, I need to go down. I need to buy food. I need to go to the doctor. These guys, I have to tell you, will go in there and individually bring down through the staircase people on wheelchairs and i can tell you i i've, I've, I've this has been my my career for the last um 12 years working with people with disabilities and, and I'll, I'll tell you one of the things that i hear and resonates more from people is i'll tell you that it takes away my freedom when i can't do the things that i i need to do independently which is get on and about with my life and have access to go everywhere but and, and and but when we have to be lifted in our chair, it's the most it's inhumane to to and and, and and demoralizing and they feel embarrassed. But these guys go and are absolute heroes. When you talk about heroes, these guys go, they don't complain, they don't say a thing, and they bring down folks one at a time, carrying them down the stairwell, and then they're like, Well, we're back now and we gotta go back up. And these guys do it. And what we do on our end is we, we've worked with them and said, you know, with as far as the, the elevator and, and making sure that that is up and running. You, you can't just block access for people that way. But I have to tell you that stories like that, that these guys go above and beyond and how that makes them a part of the community is so vital. And to, and to rob us of that is, is just, it's a huge blow to, to everyone. A few years ago, we had... Um, there was a, a storm, a huge um, rain, and a lot of folks, you know, Calexico is just pretty old, and structures are old, and houses are old, and there were a lot of people that had had um, trees fall off into, mm -hmm. like, their their houses, and they've been broken all, down. All, all along Highway 98, we had a whole line of uh, posts that were knocked out. But mm -hmm. so, so people's houses, et cetera, were affected. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you something, that these guys go on their own time in their pickup trucks with their own equipment after working 24, 48 hour shifts, whatever you guys work. And we'll go to these people's homes, clear out trees, help them re put up their backyards and their, their patios that, that have been knocked down. I've seen it happen. I have, I have clients, I have, I have family members, I have friends who said they, they just came. They just came on their own and they helped me knock down this tree because that's just because they're from the community. So I'll tell you to, to take that away when, when you, you don't have a lot but other than pride in the city that you live in, it's, it's absolutely egregious. I, I absolutely can't believe that we're sitting here having to fight for a basic human civil rights need. The, the need for public access, the need to transport people to life-saving places, hospitals, care. It's, it's astonishing. It's astonishing that someone would make the decision that some people's lives, it's okay if we lose them. That's okay, because yeah. we have to fill, close this gap. There's no other way we can save money. It, it, and it's a bigger slap in the face when you, when you hear one day the, the, the front page story of firing six people from the fire department and closing down an entire station and then the next day uh, more of a celebratory 
article where the that same city has hired four people. Uh, one, one of them, I believe, is, is, a, is a police officer. And wonderful. We need public safety. It's wonderful. If you're able to allocate some money to the hiring of folks, you, but but you're also you know the day before you you fired six and you shut down an entire station, it it says the message that we get as residents is okay so our, so our lives are just not valuable enough and I don't know how many more people you need in a finance department to count money that's not there because that's what we hear there's no money right. so when you hire people in the finance department I I I don't know how many more it takes to give the same message yeah. well i mean money. it's a, it, i mean it's it's funny i mean you say that i mean you so you have like like for example you do have a finance you know director and then you have a finance department you know and then ultimately one of the things that we're looking for is you know the the, the final numbers that which the finance director is going to to, to put forth you know is going to file it with the state uh, controller's office you know um <clears throat> but you know apparently you know we, we, you know you have that individual and then then and the, it, it appears that that individual cannot cannot put forth those numbers because I think what we have now is we also have, you know, contract a you know a financial consultant, mm -hmm. you know, to assist to assist uh, that individual, you know, in, in working through numbers and stuff like that, you know. So you have a finance director with making over a hundred thousand dollars, you know, and who apparently needs a consultant to take you know help on with that, you know, and and as of year to date. Um, within this fiscal year, you know, they're, they're already at $90,000. Um, that doesn't even include airfare, room, and board. You know, I, I, I want to try and see if, if I tell my chief, hey, chief, you know what, I can't do uh, my job. You know, I, make, I get a 911 call and I go on scene and, and I have to perform, you know, make decisions or, or perform activities. You know, chief, I can't do it. You know, can I have a consultant to help me do my job? He's going to look at me and he says, well, if you can't do it, I'm going to get somebody else that can't. You know, and those are the, I mean, that that's, you know, that's coming from the way we act and the way we handle our stuff. You know, if, if I'm asked to do something, if I'm getting this title and this, I should be able to perform that task. You know, and, and like it says, I, I wanted to jump in because, you know, you you made that comment, you know, it's like, well, how many people? Well, I, you can say how many people it is, you know, at least it's going to take one finance director and then somebody else to, to be contracted out, you know. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, maybe there's more. I don't know. I mean, I don't work well with numbers, but... You can't hire me. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it goes back to kind of what Latin you said, how the number of calls and you're tied up, and the city is willing to, you know, play hypotheticals with people's lives. I know you can like, say, what if, you know, we get three calls, and yet you can. It's a possibility, and the city, the city is willing to say, all right, that's fine. And that's a scary thing. So I guess where, I guess what action needs to be taken immediately? Well, I guess immediately is... Um it would be fantastic. I mean, and, and, and again, you know, I, I don't want to just repeat it, but, you know, uh, we we would love to close our contract negotiations with the city. We've done it faithfully. We've done it faithfully for years, you know, and and, and, and that's, <laughs> I don't want to toot our horn, but, you know, we're, we're negotiating with, you know, council members, or I'm sorry, uh, city managers. I mean, we've dealt with Every single year, it's almost like we have to deal with a brand new city manager. You know, so sometimes we have to. Sometimes two in the same year. Sometimes two, the, sometimes two in the same year. You know, so whatever relationship we had or whatever trust that we built, is like, we're not out here to, to suck anything out of here. You know, we want to negotiate in good faith. But every single time we have a new city manager, we have to rebuild that relationship. You have you know, to re-educate how what it, what concessions you've already what made. we've already done you know and and uh, so it, you talked about it, playing into your paying into your own uh, yeah I mean yeah like one of the things that you know just one of the things that we've done is is, is that four years ago we already were forecasting problems you know we're seeing like okay look at you know we probably won't have money in the future so well well how else how can we help so four years ago before any other department in the city was doing it we started paying into our insurance now prior to those four years that was one of the really nice a, a draws to come to work for the city of Calexico, you know, it was like, oh, they'll pay for your health insurance, you know, which you go in the private sector, that's that's huge, you know, like, oh my God, you know, I have to pay all this, you know, hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars to, to have health insurance for my family. The city did that, you know, so what we saw is that this is going to be a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and, and put forth our money. We're going to do our contribution, you know, and like I said, that's just one of the concessions, but you do, you, we had to educate every mm -hmm. single city manager, you know, so we're playing the same tune every single time and you know and every single time you know we do absolutely everything to negotiate in good faith 
You know, it's not in our nature to try and cause mm -hmm. havoc. That's not what firemen do. That's not what firefighters do. We go in, we find problems, and we either take care of it, don't let it get worse, or we do everything possible to make it better. That's what we do. We're not out here to, 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 to suck the city dry of absolutely anything. We're grown men. You know, if you tell us and you can prove to us that you don't have the, the means, the finances to, you know, to, to negotiate with us in, in whatever form, you know, so we have to take a cut. We're grown men. You know, we understand that. You know, so it, it's, 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 it's hard. You know, it's hard. But, but we're not out here, and we're definitely not out here to drag our feet, to dig our feet in. I mean, this year we did choose to do a different route, you know, because we did, you know, how long are we going to go and negotiate? And, and in the past, we really honestly, we took the, you know, the, their side of the negotiating team. We took their word for it. You know, and you just yeah, kind of I, go I around remember, the drain. Yeah, I, could, I can remember in years past that happening and being at council council meetings where directive is given to 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 the chief. Um, you need to stay within budget. You need to you need to reduce, and he goes mm -hmm. back and reduces. Okay, we're not going to have all of these supplies. We're going to have to make and 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 the department stayed within their budget. You know, this historically has been a department that stays within their budget and and or if they have an expenditure um for example um at, at a couple times a fire department came to measure h which is something i'd like to talk chime in a little bit a little bit further in but um uh the, the fire department came to measure h and, and 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 presented data presented need presented how mm -hmm. how it would impact services and and made the justification for for getting fund uh, or uh, you know co-funding so that uh, so that we could get a new fire engine. So th those those are important things to to note that they've stayed within budget and and they've made adjustments when there's been. They feel taken advantage of in a way. <laughs> Is that what it feels like. Um. Taken advantage of? I, I I don't know if I would. I mean, I think, I think if somebody were to speak on behalf of the fire department, that would probably be the word that they use. Um, the fire department, firefighters, we live within the friction of life. You know, we're we're right there in the grind where it all meets, and 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 we hear bad news. You know, usually on a daily basis. You know, um, it, it's it's hard to answer that question wholeheartedly yes you know because we're so used to having to have some sort of problem to deal with or some sort of bad set of news you know we kind of absorb it you know we, we absorb it and, and and you can't you know if, if that thought crosses in my mind as the, and that's the description that i want to say it comes in it comes out and 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 we just move on to the next thing you know once we mitigate a problem we move on to the next thing you know hopefully you know we we've, we've solved the problem completely where it doesn't reoccur but I mean, I, I, I would be reluctant as to say taking advantage of maybe some of my other counterparts at the firehouse would probably say different. Well, I think yeah, that, you know. that the citizens feel and, taken, and, uh, we, yeah. we feel taken advantage of. We, we, um, we entrusted um, a, a city governing governance team by voting into the Measure H. Citizens voted for mm -hmm. it because um, this is how much we... we, we we believe in public safety. Well, those, that's monies, how it was those monies were mm -hmm. to improve our community's public safety. They were to build a new fire station. They, I believe, it, they did purchase a fire, a fire engine, but probably not without its fight. So this, the the, the way this this measure was sold to us, the public, when we, when we in, was for public safety. When you, if, I think, if you ask anyone what what's important to us in our life what makes us feel safe in our community what would make us want to stay and live and invest in, in our community so you have access immediate access to public safety to good schools to and access to to again to to enjoy your life to have a quality of life worthy of of your work and your leisure so security public yeah. safety security yeah. schools recreation places of, of worship that's that's what makes people feel that they have a community that they want to belong to what what will happen when you lose fire stations you you're going to lose people's interest in wanting to live 
in the town. What keeps a town running? What keeps it um, fiscally efficient to be able to, to run is, is people buying into it, people buying homes, people bringing in businesses, people saying, that's a, that's a place I'd like to live or put my business or, or mm-hmm. work. When you have nothing to offer, um, new people coming in, so the people there might want to leave. So, you, so you really, this saving of whatever, I'm just going to say 500000 just because that's a number I've heard, and so that, that might be, that, that's really not what you're doing anymore. You're, you're really gutting the entire community. You really are, and, and, I, and I'm, and I'm going to, I also have to add, I, I think if anyone from, like, like Lalo said, there's, there's no transition period. If this, if this happens, if this goes through, that's, that's it. There's no access. There's no more fire station two. There's nothing on the west side of town. And response times to critical situations increase. And you're going to have loss of life. So what happens if, say, you know, if you, you get word that your family member may have been saved had someone got in there three minutes before, four minutes before, five minutes before, ten minutes earlier what do people start doing people start filing lawsuits and the city could just get embroiled in so many of this that this five hundred thousand dollars is just just it's the last thing you're gonna think about when you when you get embroiled in these situations um i don't know so i'll i'll, I'll tell you i think as a citizen of calexico and the, from the people that i've that i've talked to and the people that have entrusted me to come out here and, and give a message that we absolutely oppose the closing of Fire Station 2. I, that, that, is, that, that is absolutely where we are. No concessions, no, well, let's just not have two more folks on, on staff. Absolutely nothing at all. We are, we are scarce in resources as it is. I think the, even the, the number of, of folks that are already manning both of these stations is, is too low anyway. If you look at just those six guys that they said, well, they're sort of at the, the bottom, they've been here less, and that's about between six to 10 years. That tells you how long people have not been hired into public safety, into the fire department in the city of Calexico, when we've grown to a, a, a township of 40,000. And the last people you've hired were between six to 10 years ago. So you're, we're not even investing at the at the at a proportional rate into which we're we're growing as a city, we're not investing back into our public safety. We're we're still like we're wearing these people to the bone. I think your call volume every year increases. Every single year it has increased. So we're we're seeing numbers that you know, when I came in, we we're well past that. You know, I've been over fourteen years, and and we we started with hey maybe we'll get to four thousand. Well, we're now we're getting to four thousand just in medical calls. That's not including any fire suppression calls, calls for service, any special calls. I mean, we're the call volume is going to increase, and, and, it, and the the pattern is very clear. You can print out reports, and it shows you where it go. It's up. It's on an upward swing. And it's not a matter of if someone's going to die, if someone's going to. It, it it's it's just a matter of when. And, and, and I can tell you that, you know, what, and, and you alluded it to just a little while ago, you know, um, the Heffernan Memorial District has been so instrumental and that they've been so key in the fact that, I mean, every single ambulance that we currently have on, you know, at the, at the house, you know, was brought to us by the Heffernan Memorial District. I mean, the gear that we're currently wearing was given to us, donated to us by the Heffernan Memorial. Our cardiac monitors are from the Heffernan Memorial. Our, our, our breathing apparatus, our harness, our masks, all come from the Heffernan Memorial. Heffernan Memorial. I can't even, you can, you can almost even put a, you can obviously put a dollar amount on what they've done, but that outreach that we've had from them, the, you know, the communication. See, that's what happens when people work together. When people work together, fantastic things can occur. You know, and 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 I mean, they're they're they've been invaluable. You know, and then Norma was part, you know, initially of it. You know, and obviously she can speak much more um, and elaborate more on the Heffernan. But Actually, on, on on Measure H, I was on Measure H. I was part of the first committee that was um, placed to. 
to oversee the expenditures of, of Measure H. So the language for, <coughs> me I'm going to give a little bit of history, the, me the language of Measure H um, stipulates that you should have an oversight committee. But I'm going to pause right there and make a notation uh, of something that you said, Lalo, said that, that that's how it was pitched. Measure H was 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 pitched to the Calexico voters in two occasions. The first occasion was a as a as a measure that would allocate monies to specific areas, which was fire safety and I believe senior citizens. It lost by I don't know how many votes, but it didn't pass for for the allocation of those funds. It was repackaged and pitched again to the to the citizens um, that. It, created similar language very similar language but there was a footnote there that said that if if needed to needed the the this money could be allocated to the general fund so what that little little footnote wipes out whatever the intent of of what of that language was okay but Okay, so when the, the committee saw that footnote, we realized that in future years, after we were gone, there could be a potential for that fund to be treated as a slush fund and be tapped to be tapped into to balance the, the, the budget, which apparently has started happening, or actually started happening in, in the last year that, that, that I was there because... There, there was a situation where they, they needed funds. They were going to be short um, um, police, to police officers. But I, I'm, I'm moving ahead. Anyways, part of the language of the, of the measure is to oversee the expenditures of Measure H. And, 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 and because of that, we, we, the first committee created language, discussed and created language and gave recommendation to set aside 10% of all of the money that comes in from Measure H to be set in a separate account to in case of emergencies. And we detailed what it, those were. And those were um, uh, uh, a, an, uh, what do you call it? A natural disaster. Natural, na national disaster or, um, or natural disaster or uh, chemical uh, warfare, or a, a, a condition or a, or a situation that threatened the, the life and the welfare and well-being of the citizens of Calexico. That, that stipulation could only be reversed by, a, by the council's express turning over of that. I have not seen that. So if from my understanding, they've swept all of Measure H funding, current and future, into the general fund. And along with that, I, I suspect the 10%, which is not free. <laughs> so that'll be an interesting, I'd like to hear from the council, I'd like to hear from the city manager how that was done, how how that uh, how those how those expenditures of those monies have been done without the recommendation or the oversight for, for from the measure H whether in the past or in the currently. So let's see. <laughs> citizens be aware. Let's see. Speaking of citizens, so we got Ashley Day on the awesome early measure H. Not many residents knew that. Uh, good point. Let the hit series okay the top see all expect services more. Is how a doctor can put breakdown. So on Tuesday, what are you on Wednesday? What are you so guys? On Tuesday, we were, we we called for a town hall meeting town at meeting. Willie Moreno Junior High at six thirty p.m. at the um, at the cafeteria or the multi-purpose room. And really, what we want to do there is is talk a little bit about you know Letty will talk and I will talk and and then we want to ask uh, uh, the firefighters to. You know, talk to us. Of, um, they, they've we've asked and they've mentioned that they they, they had um, a forensic um, analyst, a forensic auditor, to look at the budgets and the, and the uh, up until fifteen sixteen. Yes. Perhaps. Um, and uh, and we want them to provide a presentation and give us give us some history, give us what this gentleman has in place, and and then. Um, 
put some pressure on the city council to do some things about this. We we're not we're not just going to take this line down. We're not going to let mm-hmm. it just happen just like that. We're no. we're absolutely demanding by with our citizens just rising up. <clears throat> this is our <clears throat> town. These are our services. These are our tax dollars mm-hmm. at work. We need to make them work for us in a way that makes us feel part of the community, makes us feel involved, mm-hmm. makes us feel safe, mm-hmm. and, and creates a, a, the vision of community that we as citizens have. And we're, we're, we're here to, to demand that they stop the action of closing Station 2. These are our services. These are our town. They are our public servants. The folks that are governing the city are public servants of the residents of Calexico, and they need to make decisions that favor our health, our well-being, our lives. Hope you're there on Tuesday and Wednesday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just elaborate just a little bit on the presentation, because she asked, and, and, and the reason the presentation came about, and and I'll, I'll talk briefly on it, is that, um, that we were, you know, during part of the negotiations you know that was one of the things that that, that came about he says you know what well let's do this let's 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 the association sat together and we stated that we wanted to actually do a uh an audit so we sought out this forensic financial auditor um and what he did was he did work back from the four years um he still has yet to receive the 15 16 uh documents the cappers but um when he came about, he was he was telling us, "Look, I'm going to just give you what you give me, and and then we'll go from there." So I, I know again, and I'll and I'll say it. And I say I don't know if I spoke it with it on camera or off a little while ago, but um, we um, the the num the, the narrative that's been being dished out is, and we've heard it. You know, we've heard it from uh, from a couple of council members and and some of the citizens, or even some of the city employees. He says, "Well, you know what? The city's not going to validate your numbers." You know, and we're like, validate our numbers. Well, well, there's there's a few things wrong with that. Is as one, uh, these are not our numbers. Um, these are the numbers that come from the city of Calexico, the finance department. Mm-hmm. And number two, we never asked you to validate anything. You know, what we're going to do here is we're going to shed to light, um, hopefully, you know, show what's being done. You know, what's being done, how maybe money is have or, or where they're at you know and, and 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 as i mentioned you know like and if in the end they show and they're able to prove financially you know through the documents that have to be s- submitted to the state controller's office you know well, well fine we'll accept those numbers i mean we're not we're not going to be that obtuse to, to 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 try and create something out of nothing you know but you know if you're telling us that you have two dollars over here or whatever the case may be and you got five dollars in a drawer over here that you're not using well you're not really being forthcoming you know, and that's not negotiating in good faith. You know, so part of that presentation that we're going to put forth here is going to have that there. You know, he'll come down. He's going to come down on the 28th. You know, and, and the citizens, you know, and it just it just so happened that, you know, that these two uh, entities just happened to meet. You know, like, they, well, what's going on? Well, yeah, this is going on. He says, well, what are you guys doing about it? Well, you know, this is what we were doing. So that produced, you know, this town hall meeting, you know, that they were willing that they wanted to put on, and 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 we were saying, you yeah, gladly will accept your invitation, you know. So on February 28th at Willie Moreno, in the multi-purpose room, you know, our intention is to bring our financial auditor down. We're flying him down. This is all money that came out of the association. The firefighters <laughs> pay for this, you know. It's not coming out of any city budget or anything like that. You know, it's coming from us. So we're flying him down, and he's going to be here. For, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he's going to be here for three days. Um, we're going to present there. You know, initially we wanted to present at the at the at the council meeting. Um, you know, but but that got pulled. You know, we had to have two council members agree to put it on the agenda. And initially we did. We met the time constraints. We were fine. We were set to go. And then all of a sudden, you know, one of the council members, you know, pulls out. And next thing you know, we're bumped off the agenda. You know, we were going to give the city, you know, what they had invited us to do. You know, initially. And it says, you know, why don't you guys go get a, you know, an audit? Okay, well, it's weird. We'll, it's we'll crazy that. Is that like they're like, we don't have the money, and they, you, know, you don't have the money, and they tell you prove it. Like, wait, we have to prove to you the right. the people it's in a, charge and, of. And you're saying it, we're not validate your numbers? Well, they're not my numbers. They're your numbers. numbers. <laughs> These are going to be your numbers. So everything that we present to them, I mean, it's not like we're going to be, we're not going to, we're not pulling them out of the air. These are the numbers that the city gave to us. So what are you afraid of? 
They're your numbers. So what was interesting, so what was interesting, we showed up uh, to, to talk to the firefighters and ask, you know, ask questions. And lo and behold, you know, we, we, we see uh, our city mayor show up. And I asked, well, you know, you know, apparently it was placed on the agenda. They got bumped off as, as, as the chairperson for the, for the, for the city council. The, the mayor or a board president or any chair of any elected board has the authority to place something on the agenda. And I asked them directly, I said, put it on the agenda. Well, I'll have to check to see with, with the city manager whether it's legal to do so. And he and then changed his tune and said, yes, I will, I could, you know, uh, but I need to see. It, bottom line, it didn't get placed on there. If there's nothing, you know, there's a saying in Spanish, el que nada debe, nada teme. If you don't have anything to hide, why are you afraid to put it on the agenda? That's all I got to say. Wow, I think we're approaching the hour. Um, any any final, each of you, final final thoughts? Well, I mean, I, obviously, for on, on, you know, on behalf of the Calexico Firefighters Association, we would love to be able to come to agreement with the city. You know, it's it's our history uh, to to do that, to work for that. You know, and you know, it, we're not out here to try and uh, milk the city for for anything. You know. Um, we just want what's what's not even we'll go as long as fair. Just show us the numbers that show us that you can't do certain things. Fine, it's okay, you know, and 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 allow us to continue to provide the same service that we've been providing. It would be fantastic if we can have more firefighters here, you know, to meet you know, industry standards that, that they're established. They're in, I mean, we're, we're well below the industry, industry standards uh, of what's required, you know, as far as fire fire departments to, to their community. But just, we would love to have those people. But, you know, if, if we have to work with currently keeping our six guys, you know, we can still function. We're still going to keep pushing forward. We're not going to yield. We're going to do our job. We're going to provide the service that we've been providing. We don't want that not to happen we don't want that not to be available to the citizens it does affect us but on a grander scale it affects the community it affects the city of calexico and that's not that's not acceptable we we, we don't want to do that we want to be there for them thank you Sorry. i got i got three things number one is the citizens need to stand up and 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 say their voice say that they don't want to lose these services say they don't want to lose um, this access to, to health care that will have an immediate impact. And but to do that, they need to show up to the meeting on Tuesday and they ne need to show up to the next city council me meeting, which will be on March the 1st. Um, second, um, there I, I did some homework and then we'll continue to do some homework. There are federal and state monies that um, as a city, we could apply for for grants for for be, being um, underserved and and uh, being in financial crisis. It, it's absolutely the city manager's responsibility to be looking for those things or giving direction to his so to his staff or his his chief of police or chief of of a fire department to l tap into those sources. Mm -hmm. And finally, is that um, that I really hope that um, the city council listens to this because we are doing this not just for ourselves or for you know ourselves as a community but for the benefit for our future for our for our future students for our future residents you know you you are impacting absolutely the community and um, and if there is loss of life it's on your hands Thank you, so ditto to what my my friends here are saying. Um, you know, I'll, I'll end by saying we, just the, the citizens of Calexico, we don't accept that our lives are put on the table to make ends meet. We absolutely don't. Well, thank you all for coming on. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, Gil. Cool. I'll, uh, you know, I can post it tonight, the audio. I can do it tonight. I could, uh...